We're on page 35 for lesson 16.4, comparing linear and exponential models. This is the last uh, lesson in this credit, at least, and it's an extension of the previous lesson where we were um, identifying quadratic functions. Now we're going to be identifying exponential functions. So I won't go through this explore section, but um, I will be kind of mentioning right now that uh, when you don't have constant first or second differences, uh, what you will be doing is checking the ratios of the y values to see whether or not those are constant. Because if those are constant, you do have an exponential function. So as you can see here in this um, example, if we took a look at the ratio of the function values, right? So in this case, 4 divided by 2, right here, and then 8 divided by 4, right here, so on and so forth, you'll see that those ratios are equal, because 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 4 is 2, 2, 2, 2, so on and so forth. So, when the first or second differences are not equal, um, you'll have to check to see whether or not the ratios of uh, the f of x term, the function terms, or the y values, um, are constant or not. So let's take a look at this table just as an example of what to do. Um, we're going to assume that the second differences are not equal either. So after we uh, after we fill out the first differences um, column here, we're going to be moving to the ratio. So let's take a look at the first differences. 4 minus 2 is 2. 8 minus 4 is 4. 16 minus 8 is 8. 32 minus 16 is 16, 64 minus 32 is 32, and so obviously first inferences are not equal. So let's take a look at the ratios here. Um, and again, where do we get these numbers? Well, it's these numbers over here that I haven't filled out yet. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, 2 times 2 to the power of 0 is just 2. 2 times 2 to the power of 1 is 4. Uh, 2 times 2 to the power of 2 is basically 2 times 4, which is 8. 2 times 2 to the power of 3 is basically 2 times 8, which is 16. Um, this one is 32 and 64. Okay, so again, where do I get these numbers? Well, it's the ratio of this first term divided by the 0 term. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. And then 8 divided by 4, again, we get it over here. 8 divided by 4 is also 2. 16 divided by 8 is also 2, 2, and 2. And so you'll see that the ratios of these function values are equal. Therefore, we can say that this is uh, a table of an exponential function. Okay, so in explain one, um, you can go and read that part, but it'll explain what to do in the next problem. So here we have a context where we have to decide which of two jobs you'll work and you might be in the fortunate situation in the future where um, you, know, you can choose between two jobs and uh, this might be um, a, a situation that you might consider so job A pays 75000 for the first year with a $5,000 raise every year thereafter or job B you'll take a lower starting salary of $55,000 for the first year but you get an 8% raise every year after that so Let's create equations for each situation. So first, for job A, the equation we're going to write is um, $75,000 is your initial value that you get, plus you get an additional $5,000 raise every year after that. So we're going to write 5,000x uh, for every, where x is the number of years. And then um, that's your function, that's your f of x, right? So job A is 75,000 plus 5,000 x equals f of x. Now job B, and let's, let's actually, actually change the color of this. Uh, let's change this to green. So job B is going to be paying $55,000, and you're getting an 8% raise every year thereafter. So the equation you're going to write is um, not plus actually it's going to be 55,000 times an 8% raise uh, every year 
after that. And the way we show that as an equation, as evidenced by the example on the previous page, is uh, 1.08 to the power of x, where x is the number of, of years um, that you'll be getting this 8% raise. So there is our function for job B. Okay. So now that we've created the um, table, or sorry, the equations, you can fill out the table on the right. And so I'm going to kind of fast forward through this. You can punch this in into Desmos, or you can create a table on your own and, and manually calculate. Okay, so we fill out the table, and let's answer the question based on the table values. When will job B earn more than job A? Well, if we take a look at the table, the turning point is right here um, at the end, after 12 years, because uh, at year 11, <coughs> you're still making more job a, but not by much, but in year 12, you're earning about $3,000 more, um, or $3,500 more uh, at job B at that point, so uh, 12 years. Uh, which job would you choose and why? Well, determine, it depends on how long you're going to work there, right? So um, if you're staying there, for more... Then 12 years, job B is the better job. All right, so let's go ahead and fill out the, um, the next page here. We're just continuing on with what we've been doing before. So again, we're going to take a look at the first differences. They're not going to be constant, and, but we're going to look at the ratios. So, 454 minus 432 is 22. Four, uh, and then 499 minus 454 is going to equal 45. Um, 534, well, that's terrible, 5. 534 minus 499 equals 35. 582 minus 534 equals 48. 611 minus 582 is equal to 29. And you'll see that. The first differences are not equal. But when we look at the ratios, which we again we get over here, 454 divided by 432 in 1.05. Uh, 499 divided by 454, you get 1.1. Uh, 534 divided by um, 499 um, is going to equal, what is that, 1.07. Then 582 divided by 534, you get um, 1.09. And lastly, 611 divided by 582, you end up with 1.05. And you'll see um, that they're not exactly the same, but they're pretty close, right? They're off by anywhere from 0 0.05 to um, 0 0.04 and 0 0.02. So relatively close together, so uh, you would say exponential.